Welcome to Heidi Relationships. Today, we'll read some more stories from Reddit. But before we start, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, and maybe leave a comment down below. That would help the channel a lot. Thank you very much in advance. The first one is titled, Wife confessed while drunk that she only married me as a last resort. She then goes on to say, I wanted to get with Ty, my friend, which made things awkward as my family were playing. Her sister shut her up and played it off as a joke. Not even sure how to take this. But I've always suspected she never genuinely loved me. How do I even begin to confront her about this? A user in the comments said, to bring someone specific up? No. This is eventually going to end anyway, why not save your dignity and be the one to do it? If you don't, that girl out there who would be so happy to be with you and respect you will never get a taste. Don't wait until you're both in your late 30s. Every time you let your guard down around her, this will sneak back in and start breaking bones inside of your mind. Tell her you don't want to settle for someone who would treat you that way and mean it. Also, I am sorry this happened to you. Another user said, ouch, that would be hard to hear. I am of the mind that when people say things like that when they're drunk, there's always a shred of truth in there. They may not feel that way as brutally as it came across though. It would be worth a conversation or maybe even some counseling work through. In the long run, it will always be in the back of your mind that she said it so it may be a good idea to work it out before it builds into more resentment. The next one is titled, Update to the Drunk Wife Confession Story. There's a lesson to be learned. Poor communication plus insecurity plus alcohol equals bad time. I confronted her about this and let it off my chest. I'm insecure and depressed. She knows and she's accepted me for that, and I do my best to improve. She was the only person to ever see who I truly was beneath all my bluster. She was straight up honest even though she knew it would hurt. I wasn't her first choice and was more like a last choice. She thought I knew but, it's clear I didn't. She met Ty before I did. She was young, lonely and miserable. She was tired of men breaking her hearts and was convinced she'd be alone forever. She'd swear off men. Anyways, she liked Ty but, Ty didn't even acknowledge she existed no matter how hard she tried. While chasing Ty she met me since Ty, and I were best friends back then. Since Ty never humored her and never once even noticed her feelings she settled for me. She asked me out for drinks, and she realized we had a ton of chemistry. But she quickly realized she had made the right choice and fell deeply in love with me. She typically doesn't tell the full story because it's private and people don't really need to know the details. She told me she feels ashamed she wasted time chasing after Ty and ignored the fact I was right in front of her. She wasted a lot of time chasing after a man who didn't even notice she existed. And it's not like she knew anything about him. She really didn't know anything about him. She was only lusting after him. She has only ever told her sister. Her sister reacted the way she did mostly because she really knows this is sort of a private thing. Most my family assume it was a love at first sight thing. It's awkward as hell to just blurt that out. Could she be lying? I believe her. If I can't believe her then I can't believe anyone. Her story adds up to what I remember. She's been with me the entire time. We have two kids now. A family. I really don't want to start doubting our relation. But I'll be honest and did doubt it when she told me. It's that negativity that comes up. My side was I met her while she was still crushing on Ty. She was a co-worker. I thought she was cute but, she didn't really have any interest in me, and I didn't feel like making a move. Ty thought she was unattractive and annoying. He never humored her. Eventually, she stopped chasing him and started talking to me. She asked me out to drinks one day and we realized we had a lot in common and we had a ton of chemistry together. The rest was history. Could she be cheating? Now that I doubt. As she and Ty don't get along and not to be rude but, Ty is married, and the years were not kind to Ty. As for suspecting she doesn't love me, I was drunk and when I drink my insecure depressive self comes out. I don't think rationally, do I believe she doesn't? No, but, it's difficult to not think it because I'm insecure and depressed. 
It's always that voice at the back saying, she hates you. Your kids hate you. Everyone hates you but, only tolerate you. It's toxic but, it's something I do wish to change, and she's done a lot to help me. Final update. I just found some extremely incriminating texts between her and her, ex, on her phone. It seems like they were having more than an emotional affair and I'll be getting a divorce, thanks for the advice Reddit. The next one is titled. My father is now on his deathbed. He verbally mentally and abused me when I was younger and now wants to see me, what do I do? I have three sisters that I love and a mother I adore, not always though. I hated them when I was younger because while my father would yell at me or belittle me for everything possible, they were the apples of his eyes. I did my best at school in karate, nothing impressed him, not when I earned a full scholarship to a prestigious university, not when I was the valedictorian of my year group, not even at 26 when I managed to start my own small company that has grown considerably since. No matter what I did, I was made to feel worthless, less than a person, good for nothing, useless, a failure. I have lingering issues about it to this day. When I was younger all I wanted just once was for my father to say I'm proud of you. Nothing even close. He doted on my sisters and mother though and I'm not proud to say I hated them for it as much as I hated him. How dare they get away so lightly. How dare they get his smiles and laughter and kind words when all I had to get was cruelty. It took me a long time to finally begin a relationship with my sisters or mom that wasn't the jealous angry son. Today we are all very close, I love them to death and would do anything for them. Some time ago my father was diagnosed with cancer, he's had other issues as well, suffered through two heart attacks and a stroke and it seems as if his body can't carry on anymore. He's dying and I don't care, I don't have it in me to care and if he died I could live the rest of my life having never seen him before he passed or knowing that I won't attend his funeral. He wasn't present at my wedding either. I did not invite him which was very noticeable to many of my family members, but I didn't care, I'd found a woman who loved me and that I loved, and I wanted to share that day with the other important people in my life that I love or strongly like. My uncle was always sympathetic to my cases growing up, my father, his older brother was in butthole to him, and he understood why I wouldn't want my father there even while other family members thought I should have still invited him. Here's the thing he wants to see me. He probably has only a few months left and now wishes to see me. My wife, mother and sisters all want me to pay a visit to him. Well my wife thinks I should go just once. She isn't pressuring me. She knows my history with him and says if I decide not to go. That's it then. My mother and sisters however do think I should go and have all spoken to me several times in the past month about this. The only person who's laid off bugging me about it is my older sister. I'm the second child. She's 34 and she was the one who say my father be a dick to me from as far back as she or I can remember. My two other sisters are several years younger, 26, 25. We met recently to talk about it. My older sister and I and for the first time in years I broke down crying. I literally just let it out. I told her I can't do it. I tried to put everything in the past but I can't, I hate that man and what he did to me mentally. I can't forgive him, and she says she understands. She said she'd speak to my mother and sisters however my mother and sisters tend to be very pushy. Anyway, do you all think I should go at least once? A user in the comments said, Everyone's assuming his dad is asking to see him because he sees the error of his ways and wants to make peace before he goes. Never assume. We had a similar situation with my grandfather. Turns out he just wanted one last to go at spitting some venom and needed his old punching bags to come to him because he was confined to bed. He ended up seriously assaulting my aunt, his youngest daughter who had been estranged from him for 30 years, with his cane. In the aftermath of all the drama, of his four kids only two attended the funeral, neither of them actually wanted to, they just thought it would look awful if none of them went at all. OP's dad may not be putting on an act like my grandfather, he may genuinely have the best intentions about what he'll say to Op, but even if he does, so what? He's had his whole life to fix this and waiting until now is about as selfish as you can get because coincidentally, it makes Op look like the bad person if he doesn't drop everything and rush to dad's bedside gushing forgiveness. Obviously my own experiences make me take an extreme view of the possibilities here, 
but unless there's a long history of mum and the sisters trying to push contact, it sounds like he's already playing the situation up for all it's worth. Appa's right to be wary because when there's a lifetime of mean behavior behind it, the saying, once a bastard, always a bastard, often holds true. If you go up, go for yourself, and not for a mother and sisters who never helped you when needed it. Another user said, you obviously, and with good reason, don't want to see your father. Your current issue isn't with your father, it is with your mother and younger sisters. You need to be strong enough to say, that Nan abused me for years. There is nothing he could say to change that. And I will not suffer his presence for your sake. Your insistence that I must see him has been causing me a great deal of emotional pain. Stop pressuring me to do something I will not do. If you are on the phone with them and they continue to argue, pressure, get off the phone. If you are in their physical presence, leave. You do not owe it to any family member to have some hallmark moment because it will make them feel better. A few months of low contact with your sisters and mother until after your father's funeral. The next one is titled. Update to the abusive father story. So, I went to see my dad and it basically went like crap. I caved, I ducking caved and decided duck it, I'll see what he wants. Maybe this is something worth hearing. I visited the hospital by myself. Now wife. No mom. No sisters. Just him and I. He looked old and tired and just as I predicted I didn't find it in me to be angry, this wasn't the man I remembered, this was just some old broken man. It would have been a waste of my time to feel angry and yet I did. I was so pissed off because I couldn't stand across from him eye to eye and let him see that the son he treated like dog crap had built a wonderful life for himself. We didn't say anything to each other for around an hour. Then eventually I found my voice and said, you know this is the last time we'll ever see each other right? No response. Then he replied, I know. So, I asked him why now? Why did he want to see me so badly that he had to send a message through my mother for me? And here is where I learned that my existence was duck all to him. He admitted that he did it just to give my mom closure, she didn't ask him to do it, but he knew she wanted it. So, I asked him why he treated me the way he did my whole life and he replied, I never wanted a son, never had any interest in one. It ducking hurt but I kept listening and he kept speaking. He said that in the first few years of my life he tried his best to care about me but eventually he realized he couldn't. Then came the final nail in the coffin of my relationship with that man. I never loved you but I didn't hate you either, I just didn't care for you because I never wanted a son. I wanted to give you up for adoption when you were younger but your mother would never have forgiven me, so I did my best to push you aside and you would always try and get my approval for stuff, I felt bad at times but I just didn't care for you. By that time, I was crying, me a 31 year old man, left my dying father in his hospital room and went to my car crying. I could have gone my whole life not knowing that. Duck my mom, my sisters, my wife and my dad. I'm just so pissed right now. There was a part of me that hoped we would bury the hatchet, nope, I just learned he never gave a duck. I will never speak of my father again. I will not attend his funeral or visit his grave. When he dies I'll be at the bar drinking because the ducker is gone from this world, and I will do everything I can to be the father he never was. Edit. I just want to say thanks to everyone for your kind words, both in comments and PMS, they really helped a lot particularly while I was hung over this morning and lying in bed thinking about life. Also, to the stranger who gave me gold, thank you, never had that before and it was quite unexpected. I've got a way to go still, I feel like yesterday opened up wounds I didn't even realized had never really healed and I'll be talking to my wife about it and most likely a professional as well. I won't cut my mom or sisters out, I am not angry at them, their experiences with my father were different from my own and I do not fault them for that, however, right now, the best thing for me, is just to not be around them as much. So, I don't think they'll be seeing, hearing from me for some time. Once again, I sincerely thank everybody, it was your comments and PMS that made me realize, yeah it hurts like crap, but I can't let him have any more power over me, I'm in the prime of my life and I've built a nice life for myself. 
I don't need a dying man's approval anymore because I've done the best I could for so long without it anyway, so here's hoping things will get better soon. The next one is titled. Wife is jealous because her friend has a new life and a husband. It is impacting our life because it feels like she settled down with me. My wife and I are together for 11 years. Got married 5 years ago and we have 2 kids, 5 and 2. We are both in STEM and we have a good life and we kind of did everything by the book and she was always proud of that. Her friend Mia, there are 4 of them in the group, was always little different, content on her own and she never took life too seriously. She didn't care what we think, what random acquaintances do. She quit uni, worked low-paying jobs, then got back to uni while people around her were getting married and having kids. My wife always thought it must be hard for her, but I personally never got that impression. She could always have any guy she wanted, she always had enough money for day-to-day -day life and travel, and she always seemed content and easygoing. We tried to hook her up with some of our colleagues, but she didn't like them. She said she is good on her own and if she is going to get married it will be with someone amazing. I think her parents had bad marriage, so she wasn't much into that. Two years ago, she met great and very handsome guy and they seem happy. My wife didn't really care at first and she was happy and supportive. They got married and they are going strong, living in another country so we don't see them often. A week ago, we went on a group holiday, four couples, and my wife had snarky comment on anything Mia did. Mia is still the same person, she is, just, much richer now. She thinks that Mia didn't deserve to meet such a great guy because she had many guys before. That people have to compromise and that she didn't compromise nothing. That she got anything she ever wanted. She even asked me if he cheated when we were on a guy's night out. I'm just confused and don't know how to react. I feel like my wife is unhappy and everything I do isn't good enough. Now she isn't happy with her body. With our life. Food we eat. She is annoyed with bunch of little things. I think she now regrets playing by the book and wishes she did more interesting things in her youth. Reddit, what is going on? Is this normal? A user in the comments said, I think she just always thought that she was better than Mia. Better life, more money, great husband. But now Mia, her formerly, not as good friend, is living in another country, is married, and has more money. She's not unhappy with you. She's just jealous of her friend's money. She may also feel like she worked hard to be where she is today, while Mia really didn't do anything. Another user said, your wife might be a generally jealous person but seeing how this is surprising you I'd say that this friend of hers was a benchmark friend. As in, at least my life isn't like hers. So, when she specifically does well that feels like a blow to your wife. It's not healthy, and you should gently talk to her about it next time she goes on a rant. The next one is titled. Update to the story. I just want to make quick update and thank anyone who took few minutes to read my op. Turns out, my wife is pregnant again. We definitely didn't plan another baby, but mini yay. I'm on board with everything, but as we all know I won't be pregnant, or give birth etc. Our first kid was also unplanned, and my wife had to sacrifices a lot, so I understand why she was and still is, let's say, not thrilled with news. It turned out it wasn't completely about Mia or me or Mia's husband. I guess it was mix of everything plus hormones. She is mostly worried now how pregnancy will ruin her body, but I will give my best to reassure her and love her. Edit. First baby was our no condoms but let's do it. This time she has Nix Planon in her arm which is only 1.5 year old. They say it should be replaced every 3 years, so I don't know what went wrong. Final edit. It seems she is happier now and reassured me that she is not jealous of her friends and instead appreciates that I am with her and that we got an awesome relationship. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the relationship stories. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and write a comment. I really appreciate your support and it helps my channel so much. Thank you.